Let's be on our feet for the reading of the word of God. Amen. Restoring my mind. Restoring my mind. Restoring my mind. Amen. Place your hand on your, on your mind, on your head, and say, I restore my mind. I restore my mind. Say, I restore my mind. I restore my mind. Say, I restore my mind. I restore my mind. Say, I restore my mind. I restore my mind. I reset my mind. I reset my mind. Amen. Mark Amen. chapter 5, verse 15. Let's read. Amen. Mark chapter 5, verse 15. I want us to read together. Let's go. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind and they were afraid when they saw the man who used to have demons and now he was dressed and he was in his right mind they were afraid so who is this man in order for you to know who is this man we have to check from verse one and i'll just do a drive by on it verse one and i'll go through he came to the, this region then a man who had evil spirit who lives in the tombs and nobody could bind the man. When you put a chain on him, the man will break it off. When they put chains on the feet or the leg, um, the hands, the man was so strong that nobody would bring him down. The serious demonic man. And every night in the, in the tomb, he would take some stones and cut himself and blood would be coming. This is the man we're talking about. When he saw Jesus Christ from afar, he came to worship in front of Jesus. He came to worship in front of Jesus and said, Son of man, you are the son of the most. What are you doing with me here? Then what happened? He said, he said, he said Then Jesus Christ said, Come out of the man. Come out of the man. Let the evil spirit come out of the man. He asked the man, What is your name? The spirit said, I don't have one name. My name is big. It's called a legend, which means, simply means our demons are about 6,000. One person. So um, the demon said, Please, I can go out from the man, but. In order to get out of the man, I want you to go into the pig. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, I don't want to go away, but uh, put us in the pig. And Jesus said, no problem. No, no problem going to the pigs. Right. Amen. 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 I know many people want my revelation on that, right? Amen. Amen. But, you know, you know, I'm called for power of worship. Amen. I'm not called for social media. Amen. So he gave them the permission and entered into the pig. So those who were turning the pig said, wow, our business has collapsed. The demons have come inside. Then now the man is free. 15, now the man is free. And when they saw the man, he was seated well in his right mind. Then the people were afraid of him. Help me to give the title of my sermon to the neighbor on your left and right and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Your peace of mind. Your peace of mind. Will harass somebody. Will harass somebody. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. I actually want to teach. I wanted to them to give me lapel, but the lapel is not here. I really want to teach. I want to give you this good news. Your mind is a magnet. Everybody here, your mind is a magnet. Whatever you want to experience in life is what is in your mind. If your mind is negative, negative things will come around you. If your mind is positive, positive things will show up in your life. Your mind is a magnet. People who have negative and evil minds about people, check their lives. People who are always negative, check around their lives. When somebody comes around your life and all of a sudden, anything you do, they are criticizing. They are about everything that you are doing. The first sign is that they are not happy with their lives. Because how their lives are, that's how they project it onto other people. Your mind is a magnet. And try as much as possible to calibrate your mind in such a way that every now and then you shall be thinking about positive things. Because that is the greatest universal law God has given to everybody. It's about our mind. When you check the Bible, one day Jesus was there and the, and the Pharisees went to him. They wanted to tempt him and said, Jesus, out of all the laws in the Bible... Which of them is very good that we're supposed to follow? He said to them, the greatest commandment is this one. You shall love and worship the Lord with all your, your mind. Because you cannot serve God well if your mind is not in. But unfortunately, 
Because our mind controls our lives, when the devil wants to fight you, he doesn't go after your money. He goes after your mind. Listen, all the challenges you go through, do you know the reason why you lost money? The reason for the sickness, the reason for the battle, is for you to lose your mind. That's why sometimes people don't understand you. That with all the things you went through, when they see you, your mind is still intact. When they steal you, you are not crazy. You are not biting your fingers. All things are still working well. You are still dressed nice because the first assignment of the enemy is to go after your mind. My God. So right now we see this man. A good man, great man. I preached the sermon on 31st. Great man who is doing so well. All of a sudden, demons from nowhere have entered into him. And the demons in one man, hear me, they are 6,000. His name, my name is called Legend. Legend simply means a troop of 6,000 people. He said, one man, 6,000 demons live inside of him. What will you do when a, a, a man, 6,000 devils? If, if you want one demon is in a person, it's another story. But 6,000 demons, I want to stand here to declare. If there's anybody here, now wait, listen, when you say demon is in somebody, it doesn't mean the person is a witch or a wizard. Whatever that is negative is a demon. If you are always angry, it's demon. If you are gossiping, it's a demon. If you talk about your neighbor, it's a demon. If you don't love someone else, it's a demon. That's right. If we wish somebody else... So I stand here and I declare, Michael. if there's any kind, if there's an addiction inside of you, it's a demon. That's right. Any addiction against you. Jesus. Today I came after that demon. Amen. I reject that demon. I break off that demon. Amen. Hear me, when there's sickness around you, it's a sickness demon. Right. Any disease in your body, I come against it. Amen. If you do business and it doesn't work, it's a demon behind it. Right. I reject that demon in the name of Jesus. Amen. It came out of the man. And guess what? When the demons came out of the man, the man didn't have issues. But when people that were living around, they saw that the, man, the man's mind was all right. And the man was now dressed nice. They were afraid of him. But the time the man have, was having demons, they were not afraid. But when his mindset was correct, they were not happy. So which means the enemy is not happy so long as your mind is intact. And I saw, oh, I can feel somebody. Oh I speak in the moment because listen, when they saw that the man was dressed and in his right mind, they were afraid. So, who is going to be afraid when they see that you just bought your car? When they just see you just had your new house? When they just see that you just came out of the marriage ceremony? Now, hear me? Dressed. In his right mind it means you cannot dress good not until your mind so how you dress signifies what is in your mind because when the man was in the tombs he was naked and every night every day he would take stones and cut his body a naked guy with blood everywhere but when the mind was set well he dressed well so when God can touch your heart and touch your mind I declare how people see you your appearance will change Amen. and today I came to reset your mind Amen. from every demonic agenda by fire Amen. now number two number two your mouth your mouth your words your voice comes from what is in your mind that's why I want to personally advise you don't joke with what somebody says as if they are joking sister they are not joking as if they are playing, they are not playing. Because what is in the mind shows up in the mouth. And what is in the mouth, let me tell you, what is in the mouth is only 1% of what is in the mind. They only mention one of them when they were angry with you. But a lot of them is already hidden inside. I know many people will be asking me one question. One of them, how do I look at, how do I know? I'll, I'll come to you very soon. But your mind is very powerful. Now, how do you reset your mind? How do you go about your mind? How do you move things well so that your mind will be controlled by the grace of God? And listen, your mind is connected to your imagination. Let me say imagination. Imagination. What you are wearing right now, Savarinika, you are wearing green. The reason why you are wearing green is because you made your mind that you wear green. If you made your mind you wear red, and call the red name Baha. Now, if we can make our mind to wear green and we can wear green, why don't you deliberately make your mind that, hey, I will be rich and I will be rich. Most of you, 
Check where you are staying right now. You made your mind to stay there. That's right. Some time ago, you said, I will stay in this particular place. And you deliberately work towards it. Because when your mind comes to it, let me tell you, God will orchestrate things. And all things will be aligned with the universe to push you there. Never forget about that. The greatest power is your mind. God will orchestrate. God will work it out and it will happen. Okay, simple illustration. You want to um, um, buy a particular bag. I'm talking about the ladies. And, and, and you don't have the money. Anytime you see the bag, let me be yeah, yeah, you like the bag, but you don't have the money. Do you know what you do? You spend your time, look for money, go and pay deposits, get the bag, and still be. Oh, oh, oh. Those who are not clapping are hypocrites. But those who are clapping, you are real. Why? Because you made your mind that as for this bag, I will get it. So your mind is so powerful. When God wants you, he comes after your mind. When the devil comes after you too, he comes after your mind. So why don't you use the same mind to prepare something great? David said, I made my mind to build God a house. If I don't make my mind, I cannot build. And I said on Wednesday, you don't build with the money in your account. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, I'm saying for, for you. I say nobody builds with the money in the accounts. They first build it with their mind. They sit down and see that, ah, I see myself in a nice house. Then all of a sudden, they start working towards the money. The money is the secondary point of what you want to do. If it's not in your mind, it's not in your mind, you can never. 90% of people have built their house, they will tell you, the full price of the house they didn't have it but they started with foundation they went small 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 blocks small blocks small blocks and all of a sudden by the time they are where is there because they made their mind to do it now because mindset is powerful and it will attract so many things onto you and because your mind is a magnet now this is the dangerous thing if my mind is a magnet and it can attract so many things onto me which is all right but there is an issue if my mind is a magnet, then my neighbor's mind also is a magnet. And this is where the problem and the opposition comes. Because my mind is a magnet, I'm experiencing something great, I'm watching something wonderful. My neighbor's mind also is a magnet. So when my neighbor is also wishing me evil, it's very dangerous. Because on their mind, in their mind, it will find some way to come close to me. So I'll show you how to block the negative mind from your enemies. So let's look at our weapons of our warfare. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, 5. Going. Do you have the magnets? Give it to me. So and do you have some? Yeah. So everybody, this is how your, your mind looks like. This is how your mind looks like. It will come. Everybody. This is how your mind looks like. Never forget. This is your mind. Everybody, this is your mind. Never forget. If you want to, Fakakra, okay, man of God, all of you come, Fakakra. Yeah. Yeah, get two. Yeah, come, protocol, come. Yeah, face the people. I want to buy a house. This is the house. This is the school you want to go to. This is sickness of cancer that you are afraid of. This is accident, no, no, loss of a loved one that you are afraid of. Now this is your mind. When I set my mind that I will build a house, the moment my mind tells me I will build a house, because my mind is a magnet, it will be attracted to the house. I want to go to school. All of a sudden, I try to work on my papers so that I can go to school again. It's a magnet. It will happen. Now, because my mind is a magnet, the devil also wants my mind. So when you are there, small symptoms, the devil tell you, don't you believe you are sick? Don't you, hey, now say, you are for my corner, or can say, problem, kakra, I want the breast to move, I know you pains, kakra. Then all of a sudden, you also start checking your breast. When you start checking your breast, all of a sudden, you feel salams. Hey, cancer, now. So anytime you sleep, cancer, you wake up, cancer. And because it's in your mind, it's very dangerous, it can happen.
Yeah. I have my children, I have my family, I have my loved ones. Yeah. But Mr. Nano Pabia, hey, can something bad happen to the bee? As something will be a BBSC. Yeah. When something happens to my destiny helper, what will happen? Yeah. When your phone is even ringing, you are afraid that, hey, as someone here to be, because it's in your mind too, it can also happen. It's imagination. So now it's about you. What you want to use the magnet to attract? So he says, for the weapons of our warfare that God has given to us, they are not physical, but they are spiritual. Now, what can they do? Verse 5. What can they do? To cast down imaginations. So now, although I want to, I want to um, go to school, I want to build a house, and I want to go to school, and um, um, uh, this one is no good, this one too is no good, but now I've come to church. Pastor Daniel says, my mind is a magnet, so when I'm there, I'm supposed to only think about it's good for me to receive it. But now what if someone also is having wrong mindset about me? When will I get cancer? When will somebody die about me? Because their mind is also magnet. So this is it. It says the weapons God has given to me, they are not carnal but they are spiritual. For the pulling down of strongholds, to cast down imaginations. So I will be dead and I will declare, Father, that negative mind the person has about me, I use the power of God to cast down that cancer imagination imagination that death imagination then all of a sudden it will not happen so that that thing they have planned will never be attracted to me so i son and i declare any imagination against you from somebody close to you or far away from you by the strength of god i cast it down so i cast it down because the dangerous thing about imagination is this when somebody is imagining you don't know they are they imagining the cancer for you. They can hug you, but with cancer in their mind. You can give them money, but they are waiting for some day that somebody will die around you. So when you pray, say, God, anybody's imagination. What is imagination? Imagination is a mental picture. It comes from the word imaging. So somebody has already orchestrated the mental picture of how your life is supposed to, supposed to be. And so, so God says, the weapons I'm giving to you, one of them, one of the weapons is to cast down imagination. It's not to just to break demons, but cast down imagination. So sometimes you're not careful. You spend your time, break demon, break, break demon, but you forget to cast down now, this imagination is not only somebody having imagination about you. Yourself too. You can have a negative imagination about your own life. When you wake up, your mind is negative. What if? What if? What if? What if? Out of the whole world. In the Bible, the Bible days, we have Abraham. We have David. We have Jacob. We have everyone. Say, so we have everyone. Say, so we have everyone. And let me tell you something that happened in the Bible days. Why is it that all in the Bible days, in the whole Bible days, let's now give me the scripture. Uh, Job said, what I was afraid of has come to me. Give me that particular scripture. In the whole of the Bible days, why is it that it's only Jacob, only Jacob, sorry, only Job who went through trouble? Listen, God wants to get somebody as an example in the Bible. So let's say, come right now. God, God, you know, everything you see in the Bible is just a signboard to know that God can be with you. You can go through something and you come out. And Job went through hell. His children collapsed. Building collapsed. Businesses collapsed. Enemies came. He became sick. He had cancer. Sores everywhere. The wife ran away from him. All this trouble, but later God remembered him. But I have a question. Out of all the people in the Bible, why did they come to Job? Can I tell the reason? Because every day he was thinking about that. So look at it right now. He says, what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded had happened. So although he was a rich man before, every day when he was there, he would just say, hey, what if Sam me banawu? What if Sam are you broke? And truly and behold, he became broke. He says, what I feared, what I was afraid has come to me. So church, sometimes what to think of and afraid of. And listen, Joe and Abraham when you read Bible commentary, Job and Abraham were contemporaries. When I say contemporaries, they lived at the same dispensation of time. So if Abraham's house was here, Job's house was at Islegon. But why is it that Abraham, 
he became rich, he became blessed, he became blessed. But Job, he suffered down until last minute. Because as for Job, every day he was thinking, what I was afraid of has come to me. Church, what are you afraid of? What have you been thinking about that is always harassing you? Satanic imaginations. Prophet Daniel, how do I control? How do I control my mind? I will show you how to control your mind very soon. But let me tell you what happens to you or what influences your mind and your imagination. Lift up your hands now. Say, lift up your hands. Say by authority. By authority. And put your hand on your heart, head and say by authority. By authority. I reset my, mind. reset my mind. Now, put your hand down. What influences imagination? There are only two things. Words and pictures. Words and pictures. Let me say words. words. Say pictures. Only these two things affect imagination. Now, when it comes to words, you can break it down into different ways. What you hear, what you listen, and what you say. Anything you say affects your imagination. And whatever you listen affects your imagination. That's why you've got to avoid negative folk. People who are negative, run away from them. They can never help you. But the more they keep on pulling inside of you, the fear will be generated. So what you hear, what you listen, what you say, and also what you read. And now the area the devil is fighting people on reading is social media and pictures. Social media. It controls people. What you keep on seeing. Hey, somebody have died. Hey, somebody is sick. Then all of a sudden you start, am I saying the truth? Listen, many people get depressed because of social media. But they will just watch social media and see somebody having a nice car. All of a sudden, two days they will not talk. Why? Ah, the person's car was nice. What is my own coming? Imagination that affected you. Oh, God, look at the way you are clapping. Sometimes, even you just saw the wedding of one of your old schoolmates. And two days you couldn't eat. It, uh, oh, oh I'm, I'm being real to you, child. I'm trying, oh my God. Say, say, teach Daniel. I'm trying my best. That's what I was born to do. Church, imagination is powerful. Now, because imagination is powerful, what do you have to do? Sometimes, listen, where you want to stay, where you want to live, your dream house, do a picture of it, post it on the wall every day. Watch it. I'm telling you, a day will come, you will sit inside. Beyonce, one of the greatest musicians right now of all times, she said once in an interview, she said anytime she goes to her treadmill, and when she was young and she was on the treadmill, when she was doing her exercise, she had a picture of a, of a picture of the Academy Award, that's the Oscar Awards and the um, Grammy Awards by her treadmill. And anytime she's exercising, she'll be looking at the award and she'll be seeing herself winning the award. Guess what? Now she has many awards. Because, oh, let, is it, let's see Beyonce. This is Beyonce. Look at her awards. She said when she's on the treadmill, she'll be envisaging, she'll be watching. She had the picture of it. Church, if you can have the picture, it will happen. And this what happened? Are there pictures for her? That's all? Yeah. Yeah. Church, that's what will happen for you. One day, one day, it's okay, one day, it's okay, thank you. One day, they called Commando. Do you know Commando? You know Commando? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, I don't know. Oh, come on, say for a kind of Commando. I think I'm Muslim, you know. I cry for you, I'm from Bonnie Chemo. You know, you know, you know, he, you know, he was not an actor. He used to be a bodybuilder. He won Mr. Universe. After winning Mr. Universe, they asked him, how did you win? He said, I imagine myself walking on that stage and becoming the first. And after he won the Mr. Universe, do you know what happened? He said to himself, one day, I see myself in Hollywood and I'm becoming the top star of Hollywood. And he tried that. One day, he landed a movie by the name of Terminator. He became a top guy. After that, he said, I see myself as a governor. He became a governor. Listen to me. Church, your man is powerful. Let's see, I know Schwarzenegger. And hear me, he is not an American. No. He's not American. He comes from Austria. He comes from Austria. In the background, you're Austria. Or by America. And now Terminator, they're going. Look at him. 
He said, he said, one day I will be. Church, how many times have you ever said to yourself that one day you shall be great? And look what they want to make. But one no more there be a and a trouble and quah. Me dem be we are see be here day a day. Every day I keep on telling the pastors, we will be so busy. I, I tell them we're so busy. I tell them let's get more chairs. And every day, anything I say, it happens. Let us say it. When I say we have to get extra two, two hundred chairs, I see God bringing people, and it happens. Church, if you don't say or see, it will not happen. It will not happen. Church, and what you see at the beginning of the of the day controls you. And unfortunately, the first thing you do every day is to pick your phone and watch the first WhatsApp message from groups. And every day, that's where the bad news will begin. They put it on the school group. Why don't you pick your phone first? Or pick your Bible first and read the word of God. After that also, have, have, have a drawing board. Have the things you want to achieve. Look at it. Say it, it will happen. If not, if you want to do that, put it in your washroom or your bath toilet. Because at the end of the day, you go there. You go there, you watch it. You say, ah, it will happen for me. It will happen for me. Sometimes, the neighborhood you want to live in, drive there, go over there, go and walk around over there. A man was trying to buy a house in America. He said his money was not up to point. Do you know what he did? He said every day, he would call his wife and children and tell them, let's drive to the neighborhood. And when they get there, he would tell them, get out of the car as if we have come from town and we are going home. Then they will leave the car, go around. People in the neighborhood will be laughing at them. They only need that extra hundred thousand to close the deal. Somebody came to try to buy the house. The person couldn't. Do you know what happened? They put the, market, the, the house to the market again because the price was not up to. They took hundred thousand from it. The man and the children now, they are living in the house. Power of imagination. You want to go to America, but you have never seen yourself in a winter, winter jacket before. Sometimes, if you want to go to America, go, go to the market. Go and buy a jacket. Put it in your house. Every morning, when you wake up in the morning, you say, I want the meal. I want the meal. I want the meal. I want the meal. I'm telling you. Check your imagination. Listen. Listen. One of our pastors here, Pastor Ezekiel. Pastor Ezekiel. Now he's in America and I connected him to a church and today he's going to preach in a particular church. I think I'll get the picture and show you. He's going to preach in a black American church. Hey, every day, Papa, I'll go to America. Every day, Papa, I'll go to America. Every day. When he put in a post on social media, when he's in Ghana, he will do the location in California. When he's putting a post, a location in Atlanta, guess what today? He's in Florida. Church, I'm telling you, the power of imagination is so great. I'm telling you, if you don't mean it, has helped me. And uh, the Bible says, simple, as a man, as a man thinking, as a man thinking. It's yeah, simple. So you can become only what you ask your neighbor, what are you thinking? Listen, listen, listen. I prayed for, I prayed for a woman who came to this church who was looking for the fruit of the womb. Guess what? The man said, prophet. I went home to buy a baby coat and I was waiting for my baby. Guess what? Today she has two babies. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Think positive, think well, and all things will happen for you. Now, let me show you how to break off negative imaginations. Let's go. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. I cannot give you rhetoric without giving you a um, solution. Number one, when negative thought come to you, rebuke it instantly. Amen. At the end of the month, I might not pay the bill. I rebuke you. Leave me alone. You're not my portion. No, it will happen. Rebuke it instantly. Number two, change action. If you are lying down and it happens, sit down. If you are lying... Change action. Say change action. Change action. Number three. Number three. Change location. If you know any time you go to this particular point, that's where the thing happens. Change the location. Number four. Be very deliberate to think positive. Be deliberate to think positive. When you are there, start imagining positive things. You can write it down. You can have a vision board. How many people here have vision boards? You don't have vision board. What's your vision board? Where I see myself in the next five years? You don't have it. 
on your wall. So every day comes our year of restoration and safety. Hey, the defense will come. You don't have any vision board. You don't know where you want to see yourself the next five years. If you know where you want to be, you will work towards it. Where you want to be will determine who becomes your friend. It's not everybody that can become your friend. Where you want to be will determine who you need around you. Maybe in the next five years, you want to contest for an MP position. You have to start connecting yourself to politicians. Like the way this church, in the next few years, everybody will want to be a politician. Because we are going to change the course of this nation. We will not leave it to anybody. Oh, eh, if you don't even go, and myself, I'm going to come contest. I'm telling you, not until we arise. Tell somebody, we will arise. Arise. Mr. Gerard Mebuana. Listen, all, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Four more, right? <laughs> church, church, listen, listen to me. If Africans don't rise, we have sat down and said that politics is for some people. Who told you? You are a politician. Who, who does the voting? Who goes to vote? Who? You are a politician. Politics is for some people. And now you are sitting down crying, but it's for some people. Look at Nigeria. People have risen and said that for the first time, let somebody, an underdog, also come. Just that he's going through a lot of battle, but may God come through for him. It's not, it's not easy. It's up, church. How Africa is going. How Africa is going. How Africa is going is very dangerous. Kwame Nkrumah had this vision and said, the independence of Ghana is meaningless. Until it's connected to the whole liberation of the continent of Africa. In Africa, if you don't know, no African nation has independence. We are still colonized. Do you want to know why? Whoever you owe controls you. And Ghana now, we owe about. You are, you, are wearing, you are holding a nice bag. The person will go, oh, what are you talking about? And that's how Africa has become. African nations owe every country in the world. So now they still control us. When they call you now and tell you, tomorrow, do this, what you do? It's colonization. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. said one thing, he said, whatever affects one person directly, affects all of us indirectly. What, what affects Nigeria affects Ghana. What affects Ghana affects Sierra Leone. What affects Liberia affects everyone. We have no idea. That's how Africa is going. We need to rise up and change the course. And I know that young people are about to change the course of the nation. Amen. I say young people are about to rise. We will rise. We will rise. We will rise. When you go to Kwame Nkrumah's hometown, he never built a house there. It's only one house they said he built for the mother. He said, my life, I want to leave it for the nation of Ghana. Every day you pass on the motorway. Look at the motorway. Somebody who built this motorway, 1950, 60. Hey, up to date, there's no other motorway in the nation. Who was this guy? And we can all sit down and insult Nkroma. Church, we are so wicked people. Look at Nkroma. If you don't know anything, look at the motorway. You don't know what he used the thing to do. And if you right now the thing has broken down, we still cannot repair. Every day, Pastor Ni people go and repair it. The next day, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> when on the motorway, cream, 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 cream. <laughs> at least somebody have done for us. Let's repair it well. Eh? Oh. Look at the dam, the dam. We still use his electricity. And somebody will be using electricity and insulting him. And if you don't know anything at all, go to Kolebu. You see the big magnificent, magnificent building. And, and what did he think? Look at Temahabo. He built silos at the Temapot. That when we buy cocoa, we go and keep it there for many years. We shouldn't sell. So, so that we... If Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, get 10 people of Nkroma, oh, we're ready. And we sit down to insult the man. Why are not on your...
They will be voting. Uh, then tax will come and scatter the papers. They will come and burn the place. They will go and tell you, if you are voting for this one, we will kill you. Don't vote. Oh, yeah. It's like social media. People are putting videos. First service before you go home. Amen. Number five. Avoid those who think negatively. Six. Avoid those who also speak negatively. Thinking negatively and speaking negatively. Connect to those who think positive. Connect to the word of God. The word of God is your foundation. Connect to the word of God. And what's the prophetic direction you need to do? Anoint your hands. Place your hand on your head. And declare in Jesus name father reset my mind in Jesus name how do you know that some people have wrong imagination how, how are some of the signs what are some of the signs number one when somebody has negative imagination these are some of the signs number one when you tell them your success story they are not happy their face changes number two anytime you tell them your good news they question you too much is it possible yes sure number three they criticize the success of other people number four after they hear your good news they go to the next person and ask them is it true are you enjoying it number four what they say with their mouth is always negative when they are angry but the moment they come back to your senses, they say that, oh, sorry, I was joking. It's not a joke. And also, when they are angry, what they say about other people. And now, I come to show you this one. It will shock you. Watch what they say. Everybody, look at me right now. Look at me right now. Watch what they say when they are drunk. When somebody is drunk. Don't say that they are drunk. That's when they correct. That, that is what the clear subconscious mind is. When they are drunk. Also, oh my God, my God, my God. Also, watch what they say when they are overly excited. When somebody is excited, just say, I promise, but no If you need me to say, I'm going to Thank you. I'm telling you for real. And check how they treat and talk about their former friends. How they used to call some people their bestie. But what they say about them now. Be on your feet, I'm down. <laughs> Lift up your hands. So church of God, the whole crowd of the message is this. Be deliberate to think positive. Because now, if you know how to think positive, you know that definitely you cannot control somebody's negative imagination. But you know how to cast it down. Father, anybody with negative imagination about me, I cancel it. And that's what you do. Father, let them drink their own blood. Amen. So you ask for casting, you can cast too. But when your own is negative, who will cast, who will cast for you? Lift up your hands. Two prayers. May God help us to be positive. And sometimes too, you know that you can be thinking negative. Father, you even forget that you are thinking negative. May God always prompt you. When negative thought come, boom, no, I change it. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power to be positive. The, the power, power to, to be, be positive. positive. By fire. By fire. Clap your hands and pray. Somebody pray. Papa, Papa, Papa. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And now before we read it, place your hand on your head and say, I restore my mind. I restore my mind. I restore my mind. I restore my mind. I change my mind. I change my mind. My mind. My mind is attracted. Is attracted to only good things. To only good things. Amen. Amen. Now I read. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
He says, you can only be transformed by virtue of changing your mind. So if I don't change my mind, my life cannot change. Help me to speak to someone and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Check your mind. Check your mind. You may be seated. The most powerful tool God has given to everybody is in the mind. The light we see right now, the person who produced the light, they didn't produce it with their hands. They produced it first in their mind. The man who knows how to design a car, they didn't start the car designing with their hands. They started with their mind. Your mind is a magnet. See, my mind is a magnet. See, my mind is a magnet. And uh, you hear me? When you know a magnet, you know whatever happens. The kind of dress you are wearing right now is because of what you said to your mind last night. Do you have a witness over here? And if you can prepare that in your mind and it will reflect today, why don't you also prepare a better life for you and it will show up tomorrow? You are living where you are staying here today because of your mind. You said to yourself, I want to live in that area. Do you have a witness over here? And some way, somehow, you made sure it was possible. Now, imagination and mind simply means what I see, the picture that I see on my mind. What is the kind of picture you see about your life in the next five years? There are many people seated here. They keep on praying, but they don't have a vision board. Let me say a vision board. Vision board. Pastor Daniel, what's a vision board? It's just simply something I have written where I want to see myself in five years. And I've written it down and I've painted it somewhere in my house. And the best place to place it in your washroom or your bathroom. Because every day you go over there. If you know where you want to be in the next five years, it will determine the kinds of friends you have. If you want to start a business, it will start helping you to get business friends. If you want to be a politician, you start going close to politicians. If you want to be a preacher, you start going close to preachers. But you don't have a vision board. So anybody is in your life. Those, listen, if people are going nowhere and you are with them, you go nowhere. Because you don't have direction. And life is not about speed. Life is about direction. Simple as, uh, example. Let's say you drive a very fast car. Let's say your car is a Mercedes Benz. Okay, simple. Let's use Bugatti. It's a fast car. When you stand on the boom, it gets over there. Life is not about how fast you go. It's about direction. So I'm, I'm, I'm right now on the Spinters Road. And I want to go to the Accra Mall. I'm driving a Bugatti. Bugatti goes very fast. And I want to go to Accra Mall. Then when I start the direction, I go towards Nungua. And I go towards Sakumono. It would take me two hours to get to a crown mall. But when somebody is driving a big articulator that is going slow, 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 and take the sprinter's road, it will still get there before me. So it's not about speed, it's about. And the direction you are going will be determined by the people around you. And not only the people around you, be based also on what is in your mind. Because for me to go by Nungwa, it will happen to me that, okay, my mind will tell me, pass Nungwa. Someone else's mind will tell them, pass by Sprinter's Road. So your mind is a magnet. Whatever you wish and think is what happens to you. That's why be very careful what to also think and wish for other people. People who are always wishing people evil, they don't become great in life. Oh. Because what you are thinking for me is what will happen for you. If you keep on bringing people down, you will end up going down. Clear example. Protocol, come. Stand, stand here for me. Let me just give you a clear example about your mind. I want him to go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. The more I'm pushing him down, I'm also down. But I want him to get up in life. So the more I'm pushing, so, so those who are bringing you down, they are also going down. That's right. So if my mind is negative, I will have a negative mind uh -huh. and negative life. 
Now see this revelation. You are a magnet. You only attract whatever you think. Where you want to go and stay? Have you ever even gone there to drive there before? Where you have designed to go and stay? When you wake up in the morning, the day you are free, six months, wake up in the morning, go and walk around that area and behave as if you stay there. As you think, listen, if, if your mind can see it, your hands can catch it. There is a connection to this. Look at it right now. You conceive it in your mind. You believe you will have it. You will achieve it in your hands. And you will see the full manifestation. So you conceive, you believe, you achieve it, and you receive it. Because the achieving is what I fight for. I work towards it and it will happen for you. That is your imagination. Every day you pray about something, but you have never imagined it before. You want to travel to America, but you have never bought a winter jacket in your house. If you want to go to America, buy a winter jacket. Sometimes when you wake up in the morning, wear it as if you are JFK. Because what I imagine, oh, I, I can't feel somebody. What I imagine is what to reflect in my life. I prayed for a woman in the church looking for the fruit of the womb. After I prayed for the prophet, I'm going to do something. Well, I said, what? It's a man of God. Papa, I'm going to buy a baby coat. I said, why? Because my baby that is coming will sleep in that baby coat. She was looking for baby. As I'm talking now, she has two children. Your mind is the most powerful force. So when the devil wants to fight you, he doesn't fight your pocket. He fights your mind. And mental pictures are very dangerous. What are some of the mental pictures? You, what affects your mind is two things. Words and pictures. Some say words. Words. Say pictures. Pictures. How does words affect my mind? What I keep on hearing, it enters into my mind. What I keep on listening, it affects my mind. So if the people around me are negative people, my life becomes negative. Because every day, okay, you want to start a business, everybody tells you, hey, when you start, it will not work. Affected your mind. Your mom tells you, in this family, that's what happens to everybody. It will not work. It's the mental. The second thing that affects your mind is pictures. That's why in the days of social media, be very careful whatever you consume. You can see somebody being depressed because of social media. They saw that their former classmate just bought a car. They don't have a car and because of that they are depressed because of what they saw. I want to ask you one question. What is in your mind? Now see this revelation. Your mind is a magnet. Man of God, help me for illustration. Help me for illustration. Look at this. Hold this for me. Something that will surprise some of you. Man of God, come. Your, this is your mind. It's a magnet. See a magnet. I can't feel ten, second service. First service, people didn't eat and they had energy more than you. So let, let's go. Let me see your vibration. Increase the frequency. Show them, show them, hold it, hold it like this. So that, listen, you are there. It comes to your mind. I want to build a house. Because my mind is a magnet, it attracts it to it. I want to begin that business. When I get it in my mind, this is the business. My mind will be attracted to the business. But my mind becomes negative. Hey God, what if, what if one of my children die? Because it's also in my mind, it will happen. You were there. You started having some pains in your body. You had some pains, the woman, in your breast. Then you remember that one of your friends had a pain in the breast and it was cancer. So the moment you got the breast pain, something told you in your mind you are going to get cancer when you think about it it will happen somebody's child was spoiled and every day when you are there you begin to think 
what if my child also gets spoiled? Because what I think in my mind, attraction is attracting. Church of God, your mind is a magnet. If you think about a house, it will come. If you think about cancer, it will come. The day you are there, you start thinking about kidney. You start getting problems in your stomach. Am I saying the truth? Your mind is very dangerous. Prophet Daniel, so what do I do? So that when the bad thoughts come, I can stop it. So now you have come to church. Pastor Daniel have taught you. Have good mind. And don't think negative. So every day, you have started thinking good. So right now, it has come to your mind. You want to get a house. So it comes to you. You want to start a business. It comes to you. But now, because mind is powerful, you are careful not to think bad. But what if the person close to me, that I feed, I care about them, but they are also imagining dead bad, bad things for me, what will happen? So now you are only imagining good things, it has come. But now, your neighbor who doesn't like you, is waiting for the day they put your RIP on social media. And now the Bible says, my mind, can attract that particular thing to me. What am I supposed to do? So the answer is in Second Chronicles chapter 10, verse of 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. What will it do in verse 5? Casting down imagination. So now the person who wants me to die, who wants me to fall sick, they have a mental imagination about me. But the Bible says my weapons that God has given to me can be used to break, cast down the imagination. So when I wake up in the morning, I declare, whoever is planning cancer for me, I break the imagination. Whoever is planning the burning, I break the imagination. When you break the imagination, what they are planning, it will not be attracted to your life. Because the strange thing about life is that you cannot change somebody's mind. If somebody has taken your picture and is thinking evil, can you go to the digital thing good for me? But you have the ability to cast down the imagination. Church, the greatest gift you have is your mind. Why don't you dream big? When you were young, you said to yourself, I will see this, I will see this. Most of them it happened. But unfortunately, we always concentrate on the bad things. And I'm about to shock you right now. We all know something in the Bible about a man. The whole Bible, who really struggled? Who struggled more? Who? 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 Perfect. Good, good class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, 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 who struggled more? Now I have a question. In the whole Bible, we had Abraham, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaac, Abigail, Esther, uh, Jason, Jeremiah, uh, Jermaine. <laughs> Amen. 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 We had a uh, Pastor Ni. Nee. We have Ni. Nee. All of them were in the Bible. I'm telling you, all of them were inside Ni. Nee. Do you know the reason? Because it's in Israel. That's why you don't see Ni nee there. If it was in Ghana, come on, say, and, and, and Pastor Ni nee did this. The la. Esinam, Wolanyo, Fafa. Can you now buy Bunim? I'm telling you, I chew. Can Chris Omuny now buy I'm telling you. The, the names you mentioned in the Bible, they are like us. Just say, when you could see it, I'm Africa. Bible could have a crumble in Africa, Ethiopia. Gun of Eden is in Africa, Ethiopia. So now, why is it that the whole Bible? It's only Job who went through that crisis. Do you know the reason? Because every day when he woke up in the morning, he was thinking about evil. Prophet Daniel, how do you know? Let me prove to you. Let's go. Job 3.25. Let's all read together. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. So the time he used to be a millionaire, he was still thinking that one day he'll be broke. 
So the day he, he became broke, he said, Yay! What I am afraid has come. So you can be rich right now. But if you always think one day you shall be broke, you shall be like Job. Church. Church. Lift up your hands. Hold the hand of somebody by you. Hold the hand of somebody by you. And put your hand on your head. Say, I reset my mind. Now put your hand down. Do you know that in the whole Bible, in the whole Bible, Job was a contemporary of Abraham. When I say contemporary of Abraham, where, when Job was staying in, in Spentes, Abraham was staying at Nungwa. Yeah, when we read Bible commentary, they live at the same time in the same dispensation. Why did Abraham become a rich, rich, rich man? That Job became broke. The answer is this. Every day he was afraid. One day I'll be broke. And truly and behold, he became broke. So church, what you are afraid of? And anything I thought that you are afraid of, where does the fear take place? Where? Where does it take place? When you see trouble, it can mean F-G-A-R. Some say F-E-A-R. It's called fear. Some say fear. It simply means when you see trouble, trouble can tell you fear. Forget F. Everything ye. And A. R. Run. So, so the trouble can mean forget everything and run. But someone else can see trouble and will use the same fear. And the same fear. F. E. A. R. It simply means face everything and rise. So listen. There are two types of fear. It can mean forget everything. So when I see trouble, forget everything and run. Another person will see trouble and say, hey, fear. Face everything and rise. Which of them are you? Which of them are you? Beyonce, Beyonce, right now she's one of the greatest musicians of all time. Won a lot of awards. Beyonce said, they interviewed her and said, why do you have so many awards? She said, anytime I go on my treadmill when I get to the gym, I had a picture of the Oscar award and the Grammy awards by my treadmill. And anytime I'm running on it, I watch it and I say to myself, one day I will hold it. And truly and behold, she has held it. Let's see Beyonce's pictures. Look at it. Look at it. She made her mind. Because church, I've told you, words and pictures affect the mind. It has happened. Put your hand down. One of the greatest actors of all time is called Arnold Schwarzenegger. You call him Commando. Right? He didn't start as Commando. Take, take it off. Take, take off everything. Take it off and put the scripture there. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Listen. He, di he didn't start as Commando. He was a bodybuilder. And one day, after he became the Mr. Universe, they told him, now you have become great. And after he became an actor, he said, you have become great. How did you become an actor again? He says, after I became Mr. Universe, I saw myself as becoming one of the top stars in Hollywood. And he landed a movie in a role that is called Terminator. And he became a top star. Church, if it's not here, it cannot be here. We can pour every oil on here. It can never happen. Let's see Commando when he used to be a bodybuilder. And he's not even an American. He's not from America. He's from Austria, Europe, European. But he says, I will come to America and change the game. And because of what he taught in his mind, it happened. Power of worship, what have you been thinking? What have you been thinking? And after that, he said, I see myself being a leader, a governor. Truly and behold, he became a governor. Church, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? I said, where do you see yourself? Now, church, church, listen to me. The marriage you want to have, it depends on what is over here. What do you have in your hands? Your mind is a magnet. I said, your mind is a magnet. That's right. 
church, I said, your mind, look at me right now, your mind is a magnet. Whatever you need, it can come to it. So God has given you the space to just pick it. This is your mind. The kind of life you need is this one. Why don't you just think about it and it will happen? Look at the last time something bad happened in the house. You can remember that you have thought about it before. Do I have a witness over here? So why don't you think positive and it will happen for you? Your mind is a magnet. As I bring my sermon to an end, someone say, Jesus. Jesus. One more time, say, Jesus. Jesus. Now elbow the person by you. Elbow the person by you. Elbow the person by you. And say, my neighbor, check your mind. Now my last, my last point. Let me tell you. This is my last sermon. My last point. My last point. Can I tell you? There's a guy in the Bible. He had, the demons inside of him was 6,000. One person. Mark chapter 5 verse 1. Mark chapter 5 verse 1. Mark chapter 5 verse 1. Put your hand on your heart and say it is over. It is over. One more time, say it is over. It is over. Place your hand on your heart right now and say it is over. It is over. Say, I take it out. I take it out. By fire. By fire. Say it is over. It is over. Look at it now. I'm come to surprise you. Yeah, Jesus came there. Let's go very quick. Now there was a man who came to meet Jesus Christ out of the tombs. The Bible says when the man comes, when the man comes, the man stays in the tomb, cemetery. And every time they put chains around the man to bind him, what will happen? He will take the chains and break it off. De demonic power. But every day, he will take stones and cut himself and blood will be coming. But when he saw Jesus, he came to kneel down. Then Jesus Christ asked him. He said, what are you come to do? You came here to torment me, torture me. Jesus said to the man, let the spirit inside of you come out. Now the moment Jesus said, come out. Do you know what happened? Jesus asked the spirit, what is your name? Let's see the answer. The guy said, I don't have one name. My name is called Legion. What is Legion? Legion means 6,000 troops. Because we are many. So one man, he carries 6,000 demons. There's somebody here, hear me. When somebody carries demons, it doesn't make them a witch. Because listen, everybody here, there's a kind of demon fighting you. If you gossip, it's a demon. If you hate, it's a demon. If you are greedy, it's a demon. If you wish other people evil, it's a demon. Addiction is a demon. Today, I came to break off that demon. Listen, listen. Sickness is a demon. And Jesus said, come out of the man. It came out. And look at it right now. The man said, I don't want to come out. Go and go and go inside the pigs. The pigs. Go inside the pigs. Go inside the pigs. Go inside the pigs. Go inside the pigs. And the demons entered to the pigs, and the pigs entered into the sea. But I come to shock you why I came here today. Look at verse 15. Man of God, after the man became well and the demons left, the Bible says, when they came to Jesus and they saw the man. Who used to have the demons? Sitting there. Sitting there. Man of God, sit down. Now this man used to be naked. In the cemetery. Cutting himself. All things were not well. But the day the man became well. And he was dressed. And he was in his right mind. They were afraid. Ah! When I'm, I'm correct. Should you be afraid of me? No. The time they were supposed to be afraid of the man was when the man had the demons. But when his mind was all right, they were afraid. Which means any time your life is going on well, some people are afraid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any time your life is succeeding, some people are afraid. The day more money comes into your account, some people shall be afraid. So if my success will make you afraid, then get ready. I'm about to give you a heart attack because my mind is free by the message of God. Now look at this. When he was in his right mind, they were afraid of him. It should have been said, when the man was cutting himself, 
is when they have to be afraid. So some people are always not okay with you. So long as your life is messed up. But the moment one day, the moment you pull up in a nice car, Jesus, I declare by fire. Let it they're about to make a documentary about you. That's right. They will sit down and have a meeting about you. That's right. They will begin to wonder. Oh, yeah. And you will tell them, my mind has come back. Somebody get ready. I stand on the altar. Your mind is coming back. Favor is coming. Favor is coming. Second service, I stand on the altar. Second service, I declare on the altar. Let the altar. Worship. This magnet, this magnet is your mind. This magnet is your mind. Whatever you want to see, if you can think about it, your subconscious mind is powerful. I, I believe. When Honorable was going through her court case, I can imagine what she will go through. Because you have won an election and they tell you, you are not eligible. So from 2020 till last year was 2022, for two years, that was hell. Imagine at that time, when she goes to parliament, what she would think. Because when you are there, your mind will tell you, tomorrow, you, you, you will not sit here. Tomorrow, you might not be here because you are caught and because you are caused, you are caught with the government. What will happen to you? I know it was in your mind. And out of that, when you get there, you can be miserable. But I can bet you, the time you were miserable, some people were happy. But now that you have won the case, and when you go, you are all right, and you're in your right mind, they are now afraid. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. Because your mind, your mind, your mind will tell you so many things. Even me being a pastor, when I called her to prophesy to her, and I said, you win the court case, and people called me, and said, prophet, next time, be very careful. Some utterances don't say it in front of public. Your ministry is so great, but now, look at what you are doing. I said, God told me that you will win the thing. And when, when the thing drops on me, I can't keep it. I have to say the thing, that it will happen. That's right. And it happened. That's right. Let the God hear me. My mind could have told me, Hey, nobody fight with government and win. But I broke off the bad mind. And I said, let the mind of God. So Paul said, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you. That was in Jesus. So take Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Take Jesus' mind. KGV. Let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. So you've got to have Jesus' mind. What was Jesus' mind? Jesus' mind says, with God, all things are possible. Now, 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 give me the message Bible. It will shock you. I have two minutes to go. How many people want to join the service? You want more? L let me tell you, I, 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 I gossip you to the first service people. I told them when they come to first, first, first service, they are quick, 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 they'll go. Second service people, they'll say, prophet, you want more? Because you've already eaten banku and you are here. <laughs> third, third service for quite a nice crowd. Um, um, you, you, you say grace and they will be sitting down. I said, go home and say, prophet, I'll add another one. You, you have eaten me the whole day, me need the three services. Now look, Pastor Nee, think of yourselves the way Christ thought of himself. Church, this is a revelation. So, so, so it means, if Jesus thought in a particular way, I also have the right and the ability to think the same. That's right. Think of yourself the same Christ way thought of himself. Church, 
What is on your mind? Because your father was broke, they told you, everyone, no, I'm thinking like Christ. Right. I will not be broke. They said, nobody can build a house, but I will buy seven houses. And I will sell to people, I'm thinking like Christ. Church, your mind controls you. What are you thinking? You can start from nowhere. But you've got to find yourself in another place. Let me tell you, you can be born into a poor family. But let a rich family come out of you. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. I say you can be born into a poor family. But let a rich family come out of you. You are so powerful. And listen, the most powerful person here is not Prophet Daniel. If the man of God is the most powerful person, then I have missed it. Everyone can be like Jesus. He says you can think like Jesus. That's why my assignment is for you to be like Jesus. Because Jesus came like a signboard for you to be like him. So he says, as he is, so are we. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh. So if you think you are broke, it doesn't matter the olive oil. Get crazy oil palm oil, frames oil, goy oil. When I point on you, you can never be rich because your mind tells you you are broke. Thank you very much. Say, preach Daniel. Preach Daniel. That's what I was born to do. Say, preach Daniel. Preach Daniel. I'm trying my best. Say, preach Daniel. Preach Daniel. I, I have 99 problems. Preaching is not one of them. Is why Africa has been where they are in a long time. That's right. I said that's why Africa. Give me the plateau. Hey, that's why Africa has been where they are in a long time. Because Africa, our mindset is negative. We think we are nobody. So Africans, although we've been, we've gotten independence. No African country has independence. Because let me tell you. The one you owe still controls you. Ghana now, now, our debt stock is almost 600 billion. When we divide it for us right now, everybody is supposed to pay about 18,000 cities. And if you owe somebody, when, when they come down now for us to sleep, when we sleep, so what is independence? So Kwame Nkrumah saw this revelation and said that, oh, independence of Ghana is, is meaningless until it's connected to the full liberation of the continent of Africa. And still, Africans, we are struggling. When great people show up, we kill them. We kill our great men. So Nkrumah came as a savior. We finished him. One man, years ago, he built this motorway. When you see the motorway, sometimes when I'm on, I saw the, I see the motorway. I, I don't know what he used. Look at the concrete, the power. And now, since it's got, it started spoiling, we still cannot even repair. So when on the motorway, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. And we have the guts and the army they get the goal to sit down and insult Kwame Nkrumah. He was an evil man. Hey, we are wicked. The man built Kolebu. Look at Kolebu. Look at Kolebu. Look at Kolebu. The, the edifice. What, the, what, what, what vision did he carry? Ghana had not discovered oil. He built them an oil refinery. So no oil, but he was building refinery to refine oil. That's a prophet. That's a prophet. He was walking by imagination. You, you, you are not discovered oil. We only discovered oil when Kofo was around. But he knew that no one day these people will have oil. I might not be here. So let me put the place to refine it for them. And even the refinery he has built for us, we are not using. We, we, we take the oil, crude oil, take it to Amsterdam and China and bring it back on a higher price. And Thor is collapsing. It's even collapsed. And we sit down to insult this man. That I'm trying my best. Thank you, my brother. If we can get 10 Kwame Nkrumah in Africa, if we can get 10 Kwame Nkrumah in Africa, we will not go and borrow again. 
we have gold and oil. But now we take our oil to go and we take our gold to go and break oil. We too have oil at Inzima. Church. My assignment in the body of I, I keep on telling you, I came to bring a new revolution. The old mindset is over. That's why on the 9th of March, I'm meeting all politicians and aspiring politicians. I want to instill politics inside of you because we have sat down for others to do the politics and now you are suffering. Everybody here is a politician. And if you don't want to go into politics, myself, I will contest. <laughs>
but there is something so big in you. And today I came to change the location. If anybody is here that was in any wrong location, I came to relocate you by fire. Relocation. Relocation. Lift up your hands. Because sometimes you begin to wonder, the same Indians and the London people and the Americans who are smart, when we're doing masters, we study the same class with them. And we even beat them in class. But when they leave the school, and we to leave the school, it's a different ball game. <sighs> when I was doing my master's in construction management, there was one course that is called construction law. I, I think I got A. I did good. I, I beat most of the Indians. But potholes. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Tap your hands. Let a child be born in Ghana and let them go to school in America. First, 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 first. When, when they free school over there, they can go and work at Wall Street and do well. But let them come to Ghana and come and. By the time you are aware, you are sent to a drug class and say, Walk at home. You can be a Ferrari, but if there are potholes, you move like a bone shaker. <laughs> but in a spiritual location, Jesus. that your mind has placed you there. Jesus. Today I reject it from your life now. Amen. Amen. So fire. 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 Now put your hand on your, on your mind, on your head. See, I reset my mind. I reset my mind. Now open your eyes and look at me. How do I reset my mind? To rebuke the evil thoughts. The man about to come say, I rebuke it, and it will go. Number two, change location. If you are there and you are thinking about somewhere, move to another side. Also, change action. Pray, be prayerful. And this is the prophetic direction. Anoint your hands and put your hand on your head and say, I change my mindset. Clap your hands and break any wrong imagination. Somebody pray. Say, say, restoration of your mind. Of your mind. You know the power of imagination. Um, everybody don't want to forget this. Your mind is what controls everything about you. Never forget your mind. You can never have a bad life if your mind is good. And you can never have a good mind, a good, uh, good, ma good life when your mind is negative. The color of the dress you are wearing right now is because of what you said yourself you were today. You made your mind that you wear this glove today. And that's what you are wearing. So if you make a deliberate attempt on your mind that I will succeed, the same thing will show up. The moment you heard from your friend a long time ago, you never, you never saw your friend. But the moment you thought about your friend, three years you've not seen that friend. When you thought about your friend, what happens? She called you. Your mind is so powerful. And by the time I'm through with you, we will see how to control our mind. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, let's all read together. Let's go. Let's read together. Let's go. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Now, when they saw the man sitting there and the man was dressed, and he was in his right mind, they were afraid. Help me to speak to somebody on your left and right and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. Who is afraid? Who is afraid? Of your right mind. Of your right mind. Now listen, if the people were afraid of the man's right mind, then it simply means the time his mind was not right, they were comfortable with him. You may be seated. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 going, talks to us about a man whose address was in the cemetery. Let's read from verse 1. When Jesus Christ got over there, the man was living in the cemetery in the tombs. Then when the man came, he lives in the tombs. And the Bible says the man was so strong, verse 3, that when you put chains on the man, the man can single-handedly break it off. This is how this man was. The demons in the man were so plenty. Too strong. The Bible says day and night, the man would take stones. 
he will cut his body and blood will come out. Screaming, he has left home and now in the cemetery. He met Jesus Christ and Jesus said, let whatever is inside of you come out of you. But before Jesus will continue, Jesus Christ asked the man, what is your name? Then the man said, my name is not one. My name is called Legion. And Legion simply means 6,000 soldiers. So the demons in the man were 6,000. One man, he could carry 6,000 demons. Now, when somebody carries demons, and it doesn't make them a witch. Because if you are here, and you like to gossip about a pe some people, it is a demon. If you are jealous of people, it is demon. If you hate the success of other people, it's a demon. Everybody has a demon they are fighting with. When there's a sickness coming around you, it's a sickness demon. But Jesus took it out. Can I declare any type of disease, any type of demon Jesus. that is working against your life, Jesus. I command it to come out of your life. Amen. Listen, if something always swallows your money, it's a demon. So the guy met Jesus. Jesus said, What? He said, My, my demons are 6,000, so it's called legion. And guess what? The guy said, Okay, Jesus, I, I want to be free. But before you can take things out of me, there are some pits that are somewhere. Make sure you place it in the pit so that the pit will go into the sea. And Jesus Christ understood it. I know many people have been having a question that why did the guy dictate to Jesus? Because if Jesus is supposed to take the demon out, the guy should not tell Jesus where the demon should go. But let me tell you a, a revelation. There is a principle of Retaining. It's called the principle of retaining. Now, in the principle and the law of retaining, this is how God operates. Anytime something lives somewhere, it's supposed to go somewhere. It can never just hang out. When something lives, it's supposed to go somewhere. So Jesus gave a revelation and said, If you have faith and you tell this mountain to move into the sea. So as a child of God, you can't tell a mountain to just move. You are supposed to always give it a destination. So many people are here. They've been praying against something. But they don't show it destination. If you can't show where it's supposed to go to, it will come back. So because the guy gave a destination, it was falling into the principle. Now the demon has left the guy. And the Bible says now, the guy was now sitting down. Look at the revelation. The guy was, was an Nikam. The guy was now sitting down. He was dressed and in his right mind. Then the people were afraid of him. Ah! Do you know the time you were supposed to be afraid of him? The time that the man was ugly, the time he was cutting himself, the time they were supposed to be afraid of him. But when the man is all right, they were afraid. Which means any time you have your peace of mind, some people don't want. Any time your life is flourishing, some people... Because if the guy has a peace of mind, that's the time you're supposed to be happy for the man. But never they were afraid. Which simply means when the devil is fighting you, he doesn't fight you for what you carry. He fights you for your mind. That's why most of you here, the crisis you have been through, you should have lost your mind by now. But when they saw you, your mind was still intact. The reason why some people don't understand you is because of one thing with the hell you went through when they see you your mind is still intact because by now you should have been biting your fingers counting your fingers by now you should have been at the psychiatric hospital but when they saw you your mind was still intact that's why they are afraid of you but i came to declare if my peace of mind is going to cause you to be afraid then get ready my success will give you a heart attack because god will keep my destiny shall i receive it i receive it so now have you known this revelation number two your mind is a magnet see my mind is a magnet my mind is a magnet where you are staying right now you thought about it before I want to go and stay there. Then when you thought about it, it happened. God has given you the greatest blessing that is your mind. 
The Bible says, for your life to be transformed, your life can only be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if I want my life to change, my mind has to change. But you've been praying, God, make me great. But your mind is always telling you, you can never become great. You want to become so successful, but your mind is now telling you, in this family, nobody has to become great. If you don't change that mindset, it will be very difficult. Now, when you know, get this, when you know how to now change your mind for something positive, and you know your future, you know who comes around you. Because the future you have, the future that is connected to you, will determine who bring, you bring into your life. If you are moving to point A, and the person around you is going to point B, will you go to point A? No. They will distract you from point A. So what you write and where you want to be will determine what comes around your life. And life, let me give you the good news, is not about who goes first or who has speed. Life is about direction. You can drive a nice car. You can have a nice Bugatti, nice car. You want to go to Accra Mall. If you want to go to Accra Mall and you pass on this road, within the next 10, 15 minutes, you'll be there. But the same Bugatti, if you pass Nungua, you will get there in two hours' time. So it's not about who entered first. It's about direction. But when somebody also, the same 10, 15 minutes, the person takes a big articulator. That is going slow, 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 slow. So long as it passes here, it will arrive early. But the Bugatti will be distracted because of direction. Who talked to your mind was the one who showed you your direction. Who is speaking to your mind? Who is speaking to your mind? And church, your mind is a magnet. And I'm about to show you how the magnet works. Give me the magnet. How the mindset of your mind works. Why is it? That's where you plan to be, you're able to get there. But why are we always negative? And now look at your mind. Your mind is a magnet. Say, my mind is a magnet. Your mind is a magnet. Say, my mind. Now, what's a magnet? A magnet attracts things to it. So this is my mind. So when I'm there and I think that particular house, I will buy it. It is mine. I will buy it. This is the house. Since my mind is a magnet, one day it will happen for me. When my mind tells me I am sick. You were lady, you were there. One of your friends had a lump in the breast. The moment it happened, you were afraid. Hey, what if, what about me? You were just there one day, small pain. Hey, you go and say, truly and behold, there was a breast in your, a lump in your breast. Because of, you thought about it. It also happened. You were there. You said to yourself, hey, what I'm afraid of is for my, one day if I'm not careful and my children die, what will I do? Every day, hey, will my children die? Will my children die? When you think about it. It will happen. Now this is the mindset. Now what is in the man's hand now? He wants to get a house. He wants to start a business. But this one is always thinking about there is sickness around him. Sickness is coming. This one is always thinking if I'm not careful, I'll get accidents. If I'm not careful, so it will happen to my children. As for your mind, is there. What you think about, it will happen. So you want to build a house. Since your mind is a magnet, house will come. You want to start a business. When you think about it, the business will. Oh, I am sick. It will happen. Accident. It will happen. Problem with children. It will happen. Today I want to ask you one question. What have you been thinking? What is on your mind? 
Now somebody is here and say, Prophet Daniel, thank you very much for teaching me. And now that you have taught me, I have a question. And I come to ask your question for you and also answer it for you. So Prophet Daniel has now taught us that we should always think positive. But what about now that I'm thinking positive? The person I'm smiling with, shake my hand. The person I'm smiling with, that is my best friend. When they are, what do I do? When they imagine negative for me. What do I do? When they imagine negative for me. Because imagination is a mental picture. It comes from the word imaging. Mental picture. So what do I do? When the person around me is not imagine negative for me. So let me explain to you. So God said, for the weapons that I give to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. For the weapons I'm giving to you right now, they are not physical, but they are spiritual. For the pulling down of strongholds. And look at verse 5. To cast down imagination. So let's say these three people are imagining negative things for me. And because it's also their mind, if I'm not careful, they can project it to me. But it says, the weapons God gives to me is to cast down imagination. So when I declare, I say, Father, this is my mind. And also, this is their mind. But they are imagining these negative things against me. I cast down their imagination. So by the time it gets close to you, because you have cast it down, it will be broken. Because you have cast it down, it will be broken. Because you have cast it down, it will be broken. So today, I cast down negative imagination. Whoever is wishing you bad, it will not come close to you. We cast it down by fire. Sit down. Look at God. If God has given us weapons to break things. The Bible, the Bible should have said to cast down death, to cast down sickness, to cast down poverty. The Bible says the weapons I give to you, don't cast down sickness, but cast down imaginations. Because sicknesses come from imaginations. Death comes from imagination. And look at what happened to the life of Job. Look at Job. Job, when you read the Bible, we all know what happened to Job. Who suffered more in the Bible? Who suffered more? For the last time, who suffered more? Are you sure Job suffered more? Why is it that we have Abraham? We have David? But these people, they didn't suffer like Job. And when you read the Bible commentary, Job was a contemporary of Abraham. In other words, the time Job lived, the same year, Abraham too was alive. But why did Job go through this hell? Can I tell you? When Job used to be a rich man and his things were working well, his children were around him and everything, every day when Job was there, he was thinking about the day trouble will come. So after the, so when he keep on thinking about trouble, the day his trouble came, the Bible said, Job said, ah, what I am afraid of has come to me. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Let's all read together. Let's go. Again. And what I dreaded has happened to me. And, and this time around, before this time, Joe was a billionaire. But when he was broke, he said, what I, fe what I fear. So it means although he was a millionaire, every day he was panicking. Hey, when will I be broke? Hey, when I become broke, it will not be easy. Oh. And it happened. Church. Fear come from the mind. Today I came to speak to somebody. Take away the fear. Move away the fear. Where do you see yourself? The house you want to build. Have we ever taken a picture of a house and hung it somewhere that every morning you watch it? Because when you watch it, it will be your portion. We know about a lady. Most of, most of you know about the lady, I think. Uh, she lives at Nungwao. I think she lives at Spinters Road. That name of the lady is called Beyonce. Do you know Beyonce? I think she lives at Spinters Road. Or... She's one of the greatest musicians of all times now. Because she's won a lot of awards. And one day after she won awards and Beyonce was doing so well, they asked Beyonce one question. She said, Beyonce, how are you winning so much awards? And she said, any time when I started my career, any time I go to the gym and I'm on the treadmill, I got a picture of an award by my treadmill. So any time I'm running on the treadmill, I was watching the picture. And now what I have watched has become my reality. Let's see Beyonce in her awards. I think she lives as Pinterest. So look at her. This is Beyonce. Look at it. 
she, they asked her on an interview. She said, I had it close to my wall. And anytime I'm riding my treadmill, I'll be watching it. I will be seeing myself having the award. Church, as a parent, what do you see for your children? What do you see for your children? What do you see for your children? You started dating the guy. The first thing that came on your mind was that, ah, will this one break my heart again? You have thought about it. It's a magnet. Break, broke your heart well. Come. When I marry, will I have a baby? Hey, I will not have a baby. Church, thinking is free. You don't pay to think positive. You don't pay to think big. I can tell you another form of imagination. Say imagination. And this one goes for all the women. All the women lift up. Tell service women lift up. Let me, let me tell you something. This is for free. Can I tell you? Women, let me tell you this. Do you know? Do you actually know? That when you want to buy a bag. And you don't have the money. When you set your mind to buy the bag. You'll be holding the bag. Let me break it down. Can I break it down? When the bag is 2000 you go and pay that woman 500 if, Because you already saw yourself holding the bag. And because you saw yourself holding the bag, you end. So it's not about, listen, if you can think about something, it's not about the money you don't have. If you think about it, the universe will bring the money. Anybody you have seen that has built a house, I'm telling you the truth, they didn't have the money to build a full house. About 95% of them. They will buy the land small, foundation small, but the thing is that they've already seen themselves in the house. So find, let me tell you, after you complete the house and you go inside, and somebody asks you, how did you do it? You tell them you didn't have money. Do I have a witness over here? But the moment you set yourself, you build a house. You don't know where the money came from. So if you don't set your mind for David to build a house of God for God. Second Chronicle, Chronicles chapter 22 verse 7. Check for me. Of First Chronicle 22 verse 7. He says, I made my mind. First Chronicle 22 verse 7. He says, I made my mind to build a house for God. So when you want to build a house, it depends on your. He said, David said to Solomon, my son. David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house. So you build from your you don't build from your budget. You don't build from your budget. You build from your mind. When you start building from your mind, the universe will orchestrate things for you. What's the universe? Many people, when, when, when they hear about universe, they think you're you becoming too metaphysical. You are not so serious. Universe simply means anything at all in this world. So the universe, a human being is part of the universe. So God orchestrates for men to bring the money to your hands. Well, what was the men? The men bringing the money to your hands are your customers at your workplace. All of them are part of the universe. It means everything will orchestrate for it to locate your hands. Sometimes when, we, when you mention universe, people think you are too, you know. It's not biblical. It's biblical. Universe, everything in the world is universe. Listen. Even I, I teach over here that don't spend your time to go and don't waste your money to go and buy a new phone or a new car. I always teach here, buy a land or whatever. But let's say you want to get a new phone and you don't have money. The moment you start thinking about the new phone, what happens? Some way, somehow. Some way, somehow. I said, some way, somehow. And the time you wanted to get a phone, you didn't have the price of the phone. You didn't have the money. Our mind is so powerful. Your imagination is so great. And power of worship, I want to please advise you. If your mind is negative, no matter the prayer we can pray for you, it cannot work. Everybody who knows me knows me that what I hate is negative talk. 
When you walk into my office, you see negative talk, I will sack you. Like I'm praying for you and I'm praying for you. Man of God, any you. I, I say, go, I'm telling you. Because when, when you have negative thought, no matter what, it will not work. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, as a man, so you are who you think. A man wanted to buy a house. The, man, the money was sought for $100,000. The man struggled, struggled, struggled. Do you know what he did? Every morning, he would pack his children and their wife. And they would go to the area the house is. And he told them, when you get there, open the car as if you, we have gone to town and we are coming home. So they will open the door. Then they will come home. Like, hey, daddy, daddy, daddy. Walk on the compound and go. People in the area will be laughing at them. The, 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 like the house was on the market but the man didn't have the exact money for the house he kept on doing that they, they went to the deal he didn't get it because the price was not that much it started delaying on the market the owner said he's putting a discount on the property less than 100,000 the man got the house now he's staying in the house by driving there always and making sure it belongs to him now let me see, see my last two things. You want to go to America, but you have never bought a winter jacket in your house in Ghana. Prophet, I want to go to America. Do you know what you need to do? Go and buy a winter jacket. Every morning, wear the winter coat. What shepherd? Why you say? I see myself at New 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 York, JFK. Jesus, ah, I want the day. Listen to me. You see yourself there. If you can see yourself there, your feet will enter. I pray for the woman in the church and I told the woman, you're going to have a baby. He said, prophet, I know that I'm going to have a baby. This church, people give birth from I said, you have a baby. He said, prophet, I'm going to buy my coat. Even myself, I was surprised. She went to buy a baby coat. Today, she has two children. One day, a whole community Came together to pray because for about six months by the way let me pause here as the first rains have started this today it means the heavens have been opened hardship has been broken in the name of jesus bad issues have been cancelled in the name of jesus may god open the borders of ghana with the blessings of god so for about two years a whole community there was no rain it was a farming community then all of them, one, one, there was one chaplain there, I think, Anglican pastor. He told them, let's all come together and pray. And as we come together and pray, God will come through. So the whole community gathered together. They started, started, started praying. Then a small boy came there. The small boy stopped them and said, let's all stop the prayer. God will not listen to anybody's prayer. They said, small boy, you are only about 11 years. Keep quiet, don't respect. He said, don't say that to me. All of you came to for prayer for rain to happen. But nobody came here with an umbrella. Because if you came here for prayer, come with an umbrella. Because if you have to pray for the rain to come, you're supposed to get an umbrella. It is the only boy who brought an umbrella. And truly and behold, the rain came down. Church, package yourself for where you are going. Forget about the past. Your mind will give you the old mental pictures. How you feel the last time. Now the issue is, what if I also succeed this time? What if I make it this time? And when you look at Africa, problem with Africa is because we don't look tomorrow. And the ones who come and they look tomorrow, we kill them early. Look at a man who came to Ghana. That man was the savior of Ghana. He was the Messiah of Ghana. This savior of Ghana, the Messiah of Ghana, who came to Ghana, he built an oil refinery, although we have not discovered oil. This is somebody who can think far. Kwame Nkrumah, he built them an oil refinery, but Ghana had not discovered oil. It doesn't make sense. I believe that time he was building the, uh, the, the uh, uh, refinery. I know those that were insulting him. I know those who were insulting him. The group. 
They say you are chopping the money. They say you want to chop the money for your infrastructure. That's why. It was not until after 209, 210, Kofor came to discover oil. But Kwame Nkrumah built refineries in 1960s. And now even the refineries he built, now that we've discovered oil, when we take the oil from Ghana, we don't re refine it here, we take it abroad so that somebody can... And the refinery the man built for the oil is not even a thing worth working now. Church, Nigeria has been drilling oil for years. No refinery. Now that Dangote is, is building a big refinery. Africa. You have the oil, no refinery. So we take the crude oil there. A man of God, the crude oil that comes, the petrol and the diesel we get is only 1% of the crude oil. Plastics come from crude oil. All the uh, ethanes, polyethanes, many, many chemicals, plenty come from crude oil. But we take it there. Then we now go take our gold to go and buy it. Oh, Jesus. We take our gold, then we come and say gold for oil. So we take our gold and go and bring the oil. But the oil, we have it here, but we do. Jesus Christ. An African man so far and built to refine me. Look at the motorway. When you see the motorway, the thickness of the concrete. The thickness. Build something like in the 50s, 60s. Thick. Look at this. And up to date, it's still strong. Nobody has built a motorway again. And now, the small fault that has come on, we can't even repair. The repairs, they repair. There's a particular spot on the motorway on this particular side. A particular spot. Every year, go and check. They repair. Two months, it will come back again. But what somebody built for a thousand years is still there. And our saviors like that, we kill them in Africa. Look at Kolebu Hospital. When you go to Kolebu and you see the edifice, you say, ah, where did he get this mind from? It's in the mind. We finish him. And we sit down and curse him and say he was an evil man. We killed all the people that had good intentions. Look at Thomas Sankara. Of Burkina Faso. He came to build a lot of trees on the desert. He supervised the polio immunization. This so well, he told, he told all his cabinet members, nobody should drive in the Mercedes Benz. Everybody would be in a Renault car. No first class travel. The nation became big. They, they sabotaged him. His own right hand man, Kampore, killed him. Look at Patrice Lumumba. He said, Congo. Is one of the greatest. Listen to me. The whole size of Congo is bigger than Europe. Everything you need in this world is in Congo. The phone you, you use, there's something inside the phone. Cobalt and the red that they use. Congo. Diamond is like water in Congo. Everything. But they are struggling. But one person came to change their star life for them. Patrice Lumumba. These own people came together. They finished him. Church, if you are a thinker, people will hate you. But don't let their hate stop you. Keep on dreaming. Keep on thinking. Keep on moving. And with God, all things are possible. And now I will end, this on, I will end on this note. Pastor Nii, many people don't know that everybody seated here. Now watch the person by you right now. Come to say something right now. And one day when I'm teaching about the divinity of man, is what I will show you this. Turn to the person by you. Look at the person's face a bit. Turn to the person's face a bit. Say, hey. hey. How are you? How are Say, you are a God. You are a God. Listen to me. God is the God of the Bible. God of the God of the God of God of God of God and the God, the Bible says God is God of gods. It's not Abu Sumno and your warrior God. Church. From Sunday school 101, they didn't teach us this. When you read Psalm 82, verse 5, there, the Bible says, You are a God. Help me, help me, help me. Church, listen, check, listen to me. When you read it, it says, Ye are gods. You are God. I said, you are, and you are sons of the, when I told you, you never hear God. Hey, 
blasphemous. They didn't teach you this one. You were God. So now let me prove something to you. The Bible says, now I'm going to show you why you were God. The Bible says, with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. So let's say Pastor Nee is God. So with God all things are possible. So God, th this is God, the one you've not seen before. God, God. With God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. Let me prove to you that you too are God. Can I prove to you? The Bible now says, everything is possible to him who believes. So this is God, Jesus' father. <laughs> so with him, all things are possible. But when I become a human being and I only believe, me too, all things will be possible for me. So if I believe and all things become possible for me, and for him all things are possible, the two of us is equal to... <laughs> Sit down. Be on your feet. So this now you can give to me. All things are possible to those who believe. He who believes, give it to me. Lift up your hands. Young girls, you are twins. Wow. Who started? Your, your children. Wow. Say so you also have twins. You are, I know you have twin boys. And you have twin girls. So only you, your stomach has given birth to two twins. Hey! Wow. Two, two, two boys twins, two girls twins. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, the social media influencers, those guys. Hey, okay, okay, okay. I think um, Shadow TV. Even say Shadow. Skadol, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> now, sister, your, your, your twins, where they shall be tomorrow is about what they will think they will be. No pastor's prayer can take them there if their mind tells them they cannot get there. When you go to write an exam and you say that I have failed, you will fail. But when you say I will pass, you will pass. Church, haven't you written an exam before? I mean, it has happened to me if I don't know you. You definitely know that you didn't really study well. But you made your mind that this paper, I will not fail. I want to say the truth. Some paper you didn't, you didn't read, you didn't get time to read. But you're telling you, this one, I will not show. I will not go and do rest it. So whilst you're answering the question, you try to write it in such a way that you convince the teacher, as a good my dear, nah. And truly and behold, you never failed. That's right. But the ones who told themselves they will fail, when the paper comes, they open one, two. They write more. I remember there was a course when they were in Genesis. By the way, Jesus, I got 10 ones by the grace of God. You can go and check my record at Matters of Uganda, Jesus, Kumase. And who was to, I got, I, I got eight, three A's, three B's. That's why I read civil engineering at Tech. And in Tech, I got second class upper. That one you can ask Marvin. Marvin Wahana. That's right. Or Hobby Cultural. And with all this, I was still a preacher. I was preaching in school, but I was top class. I will go to London and Ghana. Listen, when I was in London, when I was in Ghana, when I was in school in tech, I used to go to London. I will go there and preach. I will come like Mr. Mr. Time. I know Mr. Diego Mechi, but I'm telling you, I will, I will be doing counseling in school. Oh yeah, yeah, me see much ho. You remember my yachero? I'm telling you, but I will still pass because I made my mind say me feel leader. When we were in jail, said the particular course, vocational skills. One day, pa, my my many my course will be a uh, exam uh, uh, is here. We do Troy. After I wrote a bit, when I go to that course that I wrote I, I, that, that topic, sorry, madam, you didn't teach us this one in class. <laughs> <laughs> when the results come, say do CD matem. I say swa homo na mugu yani mo haseno. I didn't teach us in class. But they didn't know that the one they don't teach you have to still go and learn. But church, it's all about your mind. It's in Ghana now. But when you were young, when you get aggregate seven or eight, even school, you can't go. Now, I watch social media. 
One woman, one girl is fighting me. I got 30 and they are not. Hey! Your yeah, yeah, time. Your yeah, time eight. Who Kobe? Your time eight. Who now was in court? But now 30, 35. And they are bragging. But you know, I know the reason. You know the reason. Our time, when you get your six, you get your first choice school. But now it's computer that is too soon. Those times in the Ukraine, I woke up. Or more money, I did nothing a protocol, be and son, I afraid, baby, and son. But this time around, it's about who you know. If your father is somebody who knows somebody, so, so, oh, Jesus. But in life, as life is moving on, it's supposed to, our education is supposed to move on. But as it's moving on now, I feel like I for more. Now, if, if you don't belong to this party, you can't get this particular school. So what happened to academia? What happened to wisdom now? Lift up your hands. 35, no, I'm a doctor. Imagine I'm a big trouble. And somebody can get, man of God, somebody can get six. I will not get the first choice school. You didn't call two. You didn't call two. Burkina. Day school. Now, Obi Wanya says, it will day school. Messed up their lives. That's why Africans, I'm telling you, if we don't change our destiny, nobody will change it for us. Right. We need to change our mind. Yesterday, I watched Nigerian elections. An election going on. People be voting now, then from nowhere, crowd and sometimes will come and come and take the ballot box and run away. And scatter everything. Say, so if you are not voting for this person, we have scattered. Africa. 2023. As if the voting is now war. Hey. You know, when somebody sent to me, I, I told them that, oh no, maybe it's a movie. Until I saw different, different posts, I saw that it's true. And some places, they couldn't let them vote. Some places, that the, the, the papers came around 6 p.m. Hey. And, and, and what pains me, what pains me is the young generation. We are supposed to fight for the future. And now those who came to destroy the voting to their young people that have been paid. So you have sold your destiny already. That's why I keep on advising people. Church, politics is not for some people. It's for all of us. I keep on telling believers, enter into politics. Let's go and change things. That's why on the knife, I'm meeting all politicians and aspiring politicians. After church, one man walked to me up. There's a prophet. I've been hearing your sermon. The man is a doctor. He's a prophet. I'm going to contest. I said, I'm ready for you. I'm ready with you and do every direction for you. But this is the time. This is the time. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I told first service. I told second service. Third service. Let me tell you. If you're not ready to enter, myself, I'm going to contest. <laughs> And when I said on first service and second service, and you clap, I said, but when, when I go and contest, who will do the arresting for you? Who will do the arresting for you? So lift up your hands. So I need to push you. So that me, you know, I'm in the corner. I'm in the corner. I'm in the corner. That's right. Lift up your hands. We're about to lift up one prayer. Whoever has gotten a negative imagination about you, Jesus. Say any negative imagination. Any negative, negative imagination. imagination. Okay, put your hand down. How do I stop negative imaginations? Number one, when negative mind comes to your thought, stop it, rebuke it. When you are there, something comes from your mind. Don't you think you die early? Don't think you can suffer. You say, I rebuke it. You rebuke it. Number two, well, whilst you are sitting down, if that attention comes to you, change the action you are doing. Maybe if you know that it comes to you when you are lying on the bed like this, turn over that side or sit down and also change location. Is that okay? It will help you to break and also pray, be prayerful. Be prayerful. Read the word of God. And the last one, there's a direction. You anoint your hand with oil and untouch your head. And say negative thought, I come against it. In the mental pictures in my dreams, I reverse it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up your hands. You're about to stop negative imagination. Because for negative imagination, the person you are giving money to, you don't know what they are imagining. 
Say by authority. By, by authority. authority. Any negative imagination. Any, Any negative, negative imagination. imagination. I have about myself. I have about myself. Or somebody have about me. Or somebody has about, about me. I reject it. I reject it. I cancel it. I cancel it. Somebody stop it now. I am a Buddha. I am a Buddha. I am a Buddha.